And to talk much more about the state of terror here and abroad, former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and the Shulman Senior Fellow at the Investigative Project on Terrorism, Congressman Pete Hoekstra, also joining us, Ryan Morrow, the National Security Analyst at the Clarion Project, and staying with us, J.D. Hayworth. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us, and thank you, J.D., for sticking around. Uh, gentlemen, I want to go back to something that uh, J.D. kind of touched on a little earlier in the show, um, and that is the president's response to the terror attacks in Brussels. Let's take a listen to that. We will do whatever is necessary to support our friend and ally Belgium in bringing to justice those who are responsible. And this is yet another reminder that the world must unite. <laughs> go ahead, J.D. I, well, you know, I, I, I just want to, I want to go to, uh, I want to go to, to Pete Hoekstra, my it. old friend from Capitol Hill. Uh, Pete, I guess in modern parlance, we'd call what the commander in chief said today from Cuba a, a, a verbal tranquilizer. It was 51 seconds of platitudes and essentially nothing, wasn't it? Uh, J.D., I can't tell you how disappointed I am once again in the president. Uh, but the bottom line and all the Western leaders, they are all going to be wiped out of office uh, in the next round of elections. You know, let's unite. Uh, hashtag, we're with you, Brussels. Uh, we're with you, Paris. Return the girls in Boko Haram. Uh, you know, the populace in the West knows that our leaders have no courage. It's not time to, I don't want to go through a longer line at border security. I don't want to, or you know, at the airports, I don't want to have my pockets turned inside out one more time uh, or two more times to be a little bit more secure. I want a president, I want Western leaders who are going to eliminate ISIS in Libya, who are going to eliminate ISIS in Syria and Iraq, who are going to stop this mass migration of refugees and fighters into Europe, into the West. I want our leaders to take some action. And they, you know, we don't need one more wake up call. We've had plenty. We have no courageous leaders to actually take the fight to ISIS. The American people, the Europeans at, at a grassroots level, they know our leadership is broken and doesn't have the courage to move forward. Ryan, I want to bring you into this conversation. Is our leadership broken? Yes, and also ignorant. Uh, they don't understand how to wage an ideological war. And the president's statement uh, is really an example of that because he didn't actually say anything wrong in that statement, but it's a lost opportunity. Because right now, when ISIS carries out a terrorist attack, those are the headlines that they want. I would have much preferred it if the president thought of this in an ideological context and in his statement, start talking about losses that ISIS is suffering, start talking about intelligence we have that might be embarrassing to them, so that they don't have the narrative of success that they have today. That's how we have to fight this, uh, at least on the ideological level, in addition to the military options that Mr. Hoekstra pointed out. Well, yeah, we hear about the military uh, options, but Pete, what, what is the name of the city now where, where ISIS is uh, basically set up uh, a de facto capital? Why isn't that thing uh, level? Yeah, rock, why don't we rock Raqqa and level it? You know, that, that, <clears throat> might be, that might be the best signal to the world instead of something to show up in headlines. But of course, you'll never see that with this administration. Well, you won't see it because remember, the key line here again, is, and our, I don't believe our, our leaders are ignorant. They knew this attack in Brussels was coming. We predicted it at the mm -hmm. investigative project in terrorism uh, earlier this year, saying Europe is going to have a very, very stressful year because of the, the migration, uh, the, their social services, their civil law enforcement. They are absolutely overwhelmed. And what does the president say today? The president doesn't say we are going to win this war. He says we're going to bring them to justice. You watch the law enforcement people in Brussels talking about this and they say, wow, we found this, you know, this third suicide vest. We're going to be able to get fingerprints off of it. Like we're going to prosecute these people uh, and, and determine, you know, where they come from and these kinds of things. This is an all out war and the West does not realize it. They don't want to. I think they realize they don't want to recognize it. Uh, and that's why the president can go to Cuba. He can praise Raul Castro, he can go to the baseball game because, you know, it's just one more inconvenience to his presidency. Well, as, as Congressman uh, Hoekstra just pointed out, that we, we knew an attack may happen. We know this is tied to the man that was arrested, who was involved in the Paris attacks. Uh, Ryan, 
You, go ahead. Well, just, my my simple question, you. Ryan, is this. Should the president pack up, leave Havana, and go to Brussels? I think that would be great, but he's got to get stronger messaging. And I'm not implying that the leadership's ignorant about the fact that ISIS wants to kill civilians. I mean, everybody knows that. But I do think there's ignorance about uh, the, the how to wage an ideological conflict like this. It keeps going back to making it sound like this is about political grievances, even that comment. Uh, mm -hmm. that the world needs to unite, as if this is about division and people not getting along. No, you have to have experts in there that know how to wage an ideological war. Yes, destroy them militarily, but the threat is radical Islam more broadly than ISIS. Um, and so if you were to destroy ISIS, that'd be wonderful, but there will be another group that comes in and fills that space. All right, we'll have to leave it there, gentlemen. Congressman Hoekstra, Ryan Morrow, J.D. Hayworth, as always, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. And there is so much more to come here on Newsmax Now. We're going to talk more about Utah and Arizona coming up.